I've been putting away filming this video for so long and I don't really know why, if I'm very honest. So I think I'll just start from the beginning. Hello everybody and welcome back to Rainy London. I'm actually saying hi in a very casual way as we are preparing or I'm preparing to host a beautiful lunch in this beautiful jumpsuit. It's for Elisab and it's for bridal fragrance. So that's very, very exciting. I'm wearing on my feet my Alaya Heart white pumps and I will bring with me this gorgeous beauty. I need to do a touch of lipstick as you can see and that's it. We're heading downstairs. We're actually staying at the Hotel 22 on this occasion which is where the lunch itself is taking place and it's so good that it's on today's day because today actually we had like a huge, 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 what you call it, breakthrough in wedding planning. I think that I was so overwhelmed with the wedding planning and now I'm getting so excited about it because things are moving but I'm not going to talk too much about it just yet. I think we're gonna take one thing at the time. There's so much going on. So, okay. Anyway, I created so much mess in this room. But what I wanted to show you is that later on, I will be showing you something very exciting. I stayed in London a few days, so I kind of tried to do a bit of everything while I was here. And as you can see, created a bit of mess as well while doing that. But now I want to go downstairs, see all of my girls, have a nice lunch with them, and I'll update you throughout the day, which is something that I'm very much looking what to this is gorgeous by the way i'm loving it we're just heading downstairs to see what everything looks like it's pretty exciting i love it very exactly what we wanted very special very intimate beautiful Guys, hi, welcome back to my hotel room. Just gonna have a shot of, this is like good days, cool mint CBD, maybe not. I don't normally have these, but I felt like something. What have I got? I got tumor, zuki, vitamin C. Ooh, this is thousand milligram ascorbic acid, right? Yeah, okay, I'll have this. Girl needs her vitamin C dose. So what's up, London? Honestly, every time I'm back in London, I realize how much I love it and how much I miss it as a city. But it's just that for me, for what I do work wise, and also love wise other european cities make a little bit more sense very zesty okay i need some water as well i want to show you a few things so i have to tell you a story last week when i was in london i bought a pair of bags because i was on regent street and i was like okay i really want to buy a pair of bags now listen to this story you're not gonna believe it so i bought a pair of bags and i said because it's kind of clunky right i said do you mind if i come back and collect them in an hour and they said sure so i paid for them and stuff and then i left them there and i never picked them up okay i literally landed in milan that same evening and as i landed and i was heading to like a carousel where the luggages arrived and i saw someone wearing uggs and i was like oh, i forgot my uggs so anyway a week later i was just hopeful that they will still have them and they have so i got a pair of taz what are these like boots shoes low top uggs in brown color because i think these are quite underrated and i don't see a lot of chocolate brown i see mostly like the gray or like the beige ones but i really wanted these so i got these and when i went to pick them up i was like guys i'm so embarrassed to say this but and then they said actually we were wondering what happened and why the person never came back the person forgot honestly i'm embarrassed but i was like just thinking about like how much i have to pack and all of that stuff and then these things happen please tell me these things happen to other people as well also got some goodies from estee Lauder and erin i want to show you and i want to also have a look because i haven't actually had a proper look oh someone's knocking my door let's see who it is this is my things that i got from elisa that i also want to unbox with you guys so we got some what i really like and i wanted to tell you about is the advanced night repair in the pink bottle and this is like for the month of october because it's a breast cancer awareness month and i kind of mentioned it here and there a few times i have family history of breast cancer so i really really love this there's something i'm really really looking forward to trying and that is the estee Lauder. i believe one of these is a blush serum i think it's this one yep it looks like it i'm very much looking forward to trying this especially because i know that they really invest a lot of money into their scientific research etc i also picked up a skirt that i've told you about that i ordered last time i was here they didn't have the size and it's to wear with the jacket that i got so i finally got it it's this it's like very low waisted so it's not that mini actually and it's perfect match for the jacket like the same jacket and i plan on wearing this with my brown biker boots love that so pick that up i also picked up some stuff that i ordered from the 
Coco Neige collection. They're, they're in the back. Can you see like Chanel? But I'm not going to show that to you now. I wanted to actually show you this fragrance now. How suitable, guys. I was hosting lunch today for Ellie's Hub, as you guys could have seen. It was so much fun because it was quite intimate and beautiful. Had so much fun talking to my friends and the girls. So some of them, like a few of us were engaged at the moment, planning weddings. A few just got married, expecting, etc. Like really, really, really fun. And some also like married with kids and successful like happy homes you know so it's just like really interesting to talk about this the fragrance itself is this is like all the parfum i want to show you the bottle and honestly like a bridal fragrance i never knew that was a thing but it is a thing and yeah i told you i will show you the bottle this bottle it smells clean but not like too clean like you know how like clean fragrances can be boring it smells more like exciting clean because there is like spice to it like excitement to it and it's like ambery there's some vanilla musk ylang ylang neroli notes it's really beautiful if you ask me so definitely check it out like smell it if you pass by it's elisa le parfum bridal i mean is it suitable or what anyway also i didn't tell you this but this morning we had like a really big i think i think i told you i had like really big breakthrough in my wedding planning finally so because i'm so set on a particular very particular thing where i want to get married like it's a dream Dream and I need to get that place so yeah until I do I don't want to speak about it because I don't want to jinx it I also got a beautiful hat this is like a Borsellino Elisab collab hat I will show it to you now actually I want to show it oh no I will it's so cute here's the hat it's like a white one I got size medium I have like a really big head I think my head I'm not sure like I'm usually around medium in hats I mean it's not really big head but it's not like a small dainty little hat let's just say that anyway so this is more or less it ladies and gentlemen i got like the cutest cake i think i told you it says congratulations here from the hotel that i'm so grateful to like i told you we're staying at the 22 and right now i need to put some things away because i'm going for a night to brighton and then i'm coming back tomorrow anyway so a lot going on but all i can say is this really really busy time for me in the back end like really busy time in terms of like not having a single second to actually create content and work on like content which does bother me a little bit, but I like I have to run the business as well, as I explained to you guys now. And also today I had so much fun hosting the event. That was just fabulous. But yeah, that being said, let's go and see the family. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another day. Your girl's back here pretty much in a very similar vibe outfit as yesterday i think that we're in brighton i don't know if you can see hold on that over there is the brighton pavilion it's the royal family's holiday home by the sea i think it's quite beautiful you can't really see it now but i'm sure you've seen it in some other vlogs of mine especially particular vlogmases talking about vlogmas i just realized actually that it's just a little bit more than a month and then i am gonna start daily vlogging it's crazy that's all i can tell you crazy 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 this morning i am in brighton because i went to my good old doctor that's been my doctor for a very long time to do a smear test which is a what do you call it like diagnostical or like preventive test for cervical cancer and it's something that i'm gonna be very honest with you guys i don't enjoy i don't know if anybody enjoys it nobody wants to do it but we have to do it so if you have a cervix you should definitely take this as a little sign to book your appointment especially if you don't do it regularly it's something that I like to preach even though I also find it very difficult to book these tests but it's very very important right that's it absolutely and that's why I had to book it for you and interrupt your stay in London. yeah so I was in London and then my sister booked it for me and she's like so you have to get back because at 9 a.m there's your appointment and now I'm going back to London because I have a full day of meetings but I just thought like you know what I'm gonna put a camera on I know it's something intimate I know it's something many people don't like talking about but it's something important to talk about about. so it's also very nerve-wracking because you're like waiting for results and you kind of are like let's just say it's not the most pleasant thing in the world anyway that being said today london getting back to the 22 where we stayed for the past few days to pick a lot of stuff that i have spending the time with my sister's dog and kids that's the best and i'm actually going to spend the weekend in brighton which i'm very much looking forward to we are not doing anything and we're not doing anything no. i think i'm gonna be working the whole weekend but it's okay no. because i'll be working from the couch with the kids and with the dog in my lap no cannot think of anything better than I'm that i'm switching off my mind 
<laughs> anyway so that is the little plan for today just wanted to say hello and yeah i'll bring you with me to whatever i can i have several meetings today so i don't think it's gonna be very rich vlogging today but i'll try to do my best i know that lately whenever i show you london it's been a little bit gloomy but it's quite charming if you ask me i've been wearing this bag non-stop on repeat for days now and it's literally the best bag i love her guys we're in tiffany as i said and there's this collection of jewelry that lives in my head rent free okay this is the lock collection and i love it so much oh. so first of all thing that's on my wish list are these earrings can you see the earrings i think they're really cool but then i also want a bracelet and I really love, this is like my favorite that I love, love, love to get. So we're gonna try some on now and see what's out there. Guys, I think I just fell in love. This is so beautiful. There are many different options of this bracelet. There's one more here as well that you can see. This is like the plain gold, like all gold. I mean, I wouldn't call it plain, but you know what I mean. And then there's one with accents as well. Over here, I think this is pink gold. It's really beautiful as well. Earrings are stunning. Ugh, how beautiful is this with my stock? Okay. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. What you guys think? Let me know. So beautiful. What do you guys think? And my outfit of the day i can't show you the full outfit because i haven't revealed my shoes yet but this is what it is for now all i can tell you is that mission was successful guys i am actually i'm not gonna tell you where i am i think the true ogs of this channel will definitely be able to tell where i am from this background and it's just so funny it's quite like actually packed right now but i think that this background speaks more than thousand words i think so at least I don't know. You let me know what you guys think, but I feel so nostalgic every time I'm here. I'm trying to do my makeup, but I kind of don't want to vlog it because literally in my last vlog, you could have seen me do my makeup, but I want to talk to you and I am doing my makeup. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. What I want to say, I think, well, first of all, I want to say so many things, but the first thing that I want to say to you guys is about being back here. We're back in Brighton for the like new followers or like the new viewers. If you're a new viewer, welcome. You've probably never seen this background. And this is where I kind of started really my whole like blogging, vlogging, my whole this career, like and this what I do, the fashion stuff. Actually, while I lived here, I was still a pharmacist. So while in this house, I actually gave up on that. That was like the biggest, most important. I've heard someone rummaging through the corridors and I was like, is my mom? Like, I've told her I'm filming because my mom's currently visiting my sister. And no, it's my doggo. Yeah, well, it's my sister's dog. But honestly, truthfully, when I'm here, it's my dog because he doesn't like to separate from me, right? Oh, did you go for a walk? Because you're all wet. But that's okay, that's okay. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you is, well, first of all, Xenia yesterday sent me a picture. It's so funny. I'll insert it here, which describes me the best when it comes to other people's dogs right what are you looking for me yeah i heard you rummaging out there this is a mic it's just a mic you want to say something okay anyway when i'm back here i feel so nostalgic because i can remember the days when i was actually like you know what when you're working it doesn't matter what it is when you're building a community or when you are building a business the progress is so slow that you don't really notice how far you come like even at university right when you start university like you don't know anything and when you're in the final year you know everything but well not everything but you know what i mean you know so much more right and the progress is so slow and as you do it over like long period of time and in baby steps you don't actually notice things happening and yourself growing you don't really notice any difference everything just seems like kind of that's i think also why people don't really notice their own success because it just takes such a long time right so that being said i think that's why coming back here kind of helps because i can remember i feel like i'm back in 2016 or 2015 when i was kind of like starting a lot of the things was it 2015 or 16 i can't remember really when we moved here but more than five years ago when we moved in here i literally was starting my career i was kind of trying to establish myself i was trying to quit my pharmacy job which i managed to do then and I really remember it so well. In fact, when I'm here, I actually feel like I'm that person. And I'm wearing the same pajamas. Look at these pajamas. Can you see them? 
I'm wearing the same pajamas that I used to wear when I lived here and everything brings me back like same bedding same like well the chair is different but anyway even filming here brings me back to those times and somehow I can see like the clothes that is the clothes that I probably today wouldn't really wear that obviously like there's lots of bags that I would still wear this or carry there's a lot of clothes that I still would wear because they're like classics but also because like obviously I evolved so much between being like 25 and 34 there's a lot of stuff that I'm like I never wore this again and it's just so funny when I see that I see that Tamara who was kind of struggling in every possible way I remember being so constricted in so many different things and like dreaming of having the life that I feel like I have now even though obviously I haven't achieved even 20% of the goals that I want to achieve in my life it's just so incredible to come back here and to have that reference point like it's like a referent thing I don't know it's really incredible to see and I'm, I'm having such a nostalgic month that this whole month of October has been filled with like little references from the past I feel like it's so incredible I can't even tell you how much it inspires me and how it enriches my soul and how content and happy I feel that's what I wanted to tell you kind of finished off my makeup but I love this I love to drench my skin in this Kosas plump and juicy vegan collagen spray on serum yeah I wanted to show you a few of the bags that maybe some of you remember me wearing in the beginning of my career and kind of you know make this video even more nostalgic perhaps why not I always ask you guys this but how do people with dogs actually do anything what is this what is this come in my lap because all i want to do is play with the dog all day long it's literally my favorite person in the world obsessed come come what is it what do you want to do do you want to go for a run we're gonna go for a walk but let me finish this video okay come here this dog guys this dog look at this dog look at this dog this dog is everything i love him so much so i literally spend from the moment i open my eyes in the morning till the moment that i go to bed i spend with this face and i love him so much but it's very difficult to do anything when you just constantly feel like you want to spend most of the time with this little fluffy person anyway let me show you the bags i think this is one of the oldest bags well it's not there's even older i think in here there is my first designer bag hold on hold the horses okay guys here is my first ever designer bag can you see this this beauty here i paid 450 euros for that bag remember the time when philip asked me if i have still some of my stuff well here is one of my oldest designer bags i bought this one from me to me after two months of working in a pharmacy and i paid 450 euros for it because that was the price for it back then it was one of those things that i remember thinking like when i got it that i understand why working hard and actually working towards something and saving money for like a particular piece makes sense you know so that was my first designer bag and that's insane you know it's just yeah i still have it while i show you some of the pieces we will actually insert pictures of me wearing it just so you guys can as well see how my style evolved and everything that has happened meanwhile so then i want to show you this was a chanel boy this is also the first chanel handbag that i got i think in 2016 or 17 i can't remember i still have it it's sort of like a lamb very very smooth leather when you open it you would think that maybe it's quite scratched i mean it's not it's just like the wear is obviously heavier and i wore this bag so much that i can see almost quite a bit of wear on the hardware i'll bring it closer i don't know if you guys can see but insane how much i love and i love this bag i think it's a classic and it's such a special piece now i have another special piece emotionally but how do i not disturb the dog to get this okay all good all good okay i've shown you this one recently in the video that Filippo and I commented on my style evolution and New York Fashion Week vlogs and this is the very dusty right now Louis Vuitton Alma in color Amaran it's so dusty I really have to like yeah it's not that dusty but it's obviously it needs a bit of like polish look I haven't even like a bit of a clean wouldn't be bad you know I think this bag was so popular I remember at the time it was 1200 pounds probably now cost like triple that and it seemed like unachievable to get something like this so yeah it's exactly Exactly. so i know i know i know i know i know my sister bought it for me as a graduation present and i was beyond happy you can't even imagine the happiness at the time then what else are we gonna show we're gonna show this chanel camellia bag which is the bag that i haven't actually worn that much but i think it's a very special piece i bought it as a gift for me to me at the end of one fashion week i've also spoken about that recently and this one more recent also a gift from me to me in 2019 
19, I believe, because this is Chanel 19. It's the last creation of Karl Lagerfeld, actually. And I wore this bag a lot. I bought the navy tweed. I thought it was quite rare. Not many people had this bag at the time. So it was like a very, very special, the first edition of Chanel 19. Love it. And I still kind of think it's a bag that, you know, like I would wear. Another bag that I got in 2019, I believe, is this Bottega. Look at it. It looks like nothing when it's empty, but I feel like this is quite current. When I still wear the same bag in black in a way bigger size and this is really actually the brown bag i was just thinking about it that i need like a proper smooth brown bag i also wore this one day and night a louis vuitton can now this bag i got the day before i got my first ever hermes bag and that's why it's such a special story about it so i was in paris at couture fashion week and i was applying every single day to get an appointment at hermes and every single day i was getting rejected but i'm the kind of girl that never gives up okay like whatever you can think about me but remember one thing i'm a lot of things but i I'm not a giver upper. Never give up. I never give up, okay? I sometimes say to my team and to my family, I'm like a pit bull. When I bite, I don't let go until I tear it all off. And my sister said that that's not a very nice comparison, but it's just how I am. So I kept applying and applying and applying and applying and applying. And I really wanted this bag, but it was like sold out. It was impossible to get in Louis Vuitton at the time. It just came out. It was this and the little kind of hat box. And I really wanted this bag. So eventually I came to uh, Saint Germain Louis Vuitton boutique. Yeah, I know we love each other very much. I know and they know too, but you need to let me record this and then we're gonna cuddle so much So I went to the Saint Germain boutique and the lady said listen I have one and I will sell it to you and The moment that I bought this bag which was so desired and so difficult to get I thought in my head now that I don't want the Hermes appointment anymore because I pleased myself with like a bag I for sure will get an Hermes appointment and that's exactly what happened I don't know if you believe in power of attraction. I do and I I literally thought like, okay, now I released it and now I don't want it anymore. And now it will come to me for sure. And that's exactly what happened. That afternoon, I got a message that says, tomorrow you will have a leather goods appointment at Hermes. And I got my first ever Hermes Kelly in cactus, which I'll insert the picture here. And that kind of brings me to an important topic. I don't have that bag anymore because it got stolen in the robbery in 2021 that most of you, I suppose, know about now on this channel. And it's something that I never actually given you guys a closure on that topic. And I believe that maybe we should actually do that now because it could be quite interesting. Anyway, let's just finish this. Dio. Uh, this was the obviously well one of my like it's not here because I gave it to my mom My first ever Dior bag was a Lady Dior in black medium size in shiny like patent leather And I got it when I was like, I don't know like 23 maybe 22 23 and it was absolutely absolutely Incredible I obviously this was like years before I ever worked with Dior and it was just a bag of dreams Okay, like it was something that I thought was so so precious and so special and I thought like you know I got one but I will never get another one because it's just so expensive and so impossible and then not only that I got another one but I got two these both of these bags I later on bought myself with my hard-earned money and I remember when I got this one it was I believe in 2016 or 17 I was going to Dallas for a conference and I was carrying it with so much pride because actually you know that Lady Dior bags are sometimes can be quite hard to get into because they have this like flap but this one was like the new softer version so it was like very convenient to track everything you need in it plus I, I really like this bag actually I think I would wear it now because it's kind of got that relaxed vibe which is the vibe that we want now and then later on I bought myself this one which was like so tiny I remember thinking of this bag and thinking that it's such a small bag and then when I got it let me try and find it so I was telling Philippe this thing about things and people I can't find now what I'm looking for in this bag so basically I bought this bag it's light pink as you can see very very precious and special and in the first month of buying this bag I remember like I packed it on a trip and I remember spotting a 10 mark on the leather which now I cannot see it's like disappeared this is like a glitch in matrix guys there was a pen mark on this bag on this particular bag when I saw it I was gutted I was absolutely upset and destroyed because I spent a lot of money on this bag I, I like was oh my god I remember telling myself I don't deserve anything because I can't look after things and I was really 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 upset about it. I was so upset about it that it actually made me feel bad. And then I sat down with myself and had a conversation with myself telling myself, listen tomorrow, if things that you buy get like kind of, I don't want to say damaged, but something happens to them out of your control because my lifestyle is such that I travel so much and that I pack these things in like hand luggage and in bags and in 
suitcases you can't control what happens when you're traveling if like obviously i don't pack my leather goods or my handbag in my check-in luggage but let's say my shoes if something is going to like spill in the suitcase because of the pressure or because of the way that they throw it and it spills on a new pair of shoes this is out of my control i can do nothing yes i can put it in a dust bag but it's still not going to 100 percent prevent it from happening so i basically had this conversation with myself to say listen yes this is part of your lifestyle and of your job if you wouldn't work you wouldn't be able to afford these things like the only way to preserve these things in a perfect condition would be not to work and not to travel so one kind of cancels the other anyway because i can't have this bag if i'm not working but also i cannot preserve it if in a perfect condition if i'm not working and like traveling and going around and going to places and you know i literally remember that was the moment that i said people are to be loved things are to be used and not the other way around and that's something that's very important to me also today so yeah talking about dior this was the first dior bag that i bought myself with my own money i remember thinking it's the most beautiful light blue bag it's a color of like a blue broom at hermes and i actually also don't have that bag anymore i will talk about that again but i have a mini kelly in blue broom now and i remember when i bought this bag i was like oh my god did i make a mistake do i want this bag was it a lot of money is this the right thing to do and i'm so happy that i treated myself with something that i bought myself a nice designer bag because it was like the beginning of my blogging it gave me a lot of motivation it gave me a lot of like i spent the money that i earned but then gave me lots of motivation to work even more to earn money so i can buy other nice things from me to me yes do you want to come back in my lap well why did you leave why did you leave you know what i mean you're just like a typical boy you're a typical boy you leave and then you said that you left so you want to come back but then it's too late another bag that i think is important part of my blogging history is the gucci dionysus i remember this so well guys alessandro michele came to gucci and this was i believe the first bag that he like came out with and i wanted it so badly i wanted the one with the b but it was just like a b embroidery was here and it was so expensive that i was like it's okay i'll just get this basic one with like taupey color tones you can wear this with so many things and i wore this billions of times i think this bag aged really well i think it was a great bag and again i wore it at the same time that i wore this one so they come from like a sameish era if that makes sense okay i'll show you maybe one more is one more okay or two more this one this is the fendi peekaboo extra light it's filled with some stuff that are supposed to keep the shape so i don't know if it looks like great like this but this bag marked one whole vlogmas i bought it at the beginning of vlogmas and then i carried it every single day throughout the vlogmas and i love it i think it's beautiful very very special it's so crazy when i think about the person that i was then i find it like it was completely different person i remember i, I don't actually remember where i think it was the vlogmas that i went to finland with my then photographer Dushan, and we had the best time we were like kind of i don't even know like i remember in finland in december it's like one hour of daylight so i don't know if you want to see those vlogs again i feel like i'm a different person now because i feel like i was then girl and now i'm a woman in a way of like living the life as well and the responsibilities that i have and the way i do everything but we had nevertheless so much fun and we still like remember those times like in such a good way you know what i mean and i think that's all that i'm gonna show you okay maybe one more i made so much mess this one oh my god i want to literally show you so many bags but it's so hard so this one is the first gift that i ever received from louis vuitton like first handbag gift that i received from louis vuitton before i got this gift i bought myself from what i can see from this shelf is like one two three i can see like the palm springs backpack i can see the like red top handle bernie one i can see this one obviously the neverfold the alma like i had at least 10 louis vuitton bags and this is the one that multi pochette that louis vuitton gifted me i was beyond myself because i literally could not believe that i'm receiving a bag from louis vuitton as a gift i was like is this the moment that i made it but i never actually i have to be very honest with you i never in my career had a moment that i was like that's it i made it never never because i always feel like there's still so much more to achieve so when i received this this was extremely special to me and extremely important and it was like a bag that everybody wanted but it was sold out everywhere so it presented like a huge milestone for me in my career and it was just something that i couldn't believe that i actually achieved if that makes sense so yeah so let me show you the mess that i made if you remember you remember there's so much more here obviously and just not just here but there's more elsewhere god i'm trying to be careful where i step so here in the back look at this 
bag. This is another boy bag. Probably one of my favorite bags that I still own. I got this as a Christmas present for my sister and it's a beautiful nudie color. Love it. The capucine, this was the red bag that I spoke about. I also bought myself back in the days, the Petit Mal. Someone asked me that if this bag got stolen. It didn't get stolen because, hold on, okay. This bag never got stolen because I never had it in Paris with me. So you wouldn't have seen me wear this probably since pandemic because it was in England. That's the Palm Springs, my book totes. Isn't this crazy guys? Love this. This is the bag that I wore on the first date with Filippo. It's a little mini book tote and it has my initials in the back. And on the first date, I just found this, wait, I found this chocolate, which is the chocolate that he gave me on our first date. He put it in the bag, in that bag. It was from Hotel Cost. He was like, don't let it waste. Take it home and eat it later. You see what I mean when I say this place is very nostalgic for me? I'm gonna call him now and ask him if he knows what this is on FaceTime. So let's call Filippo. I think it's um, to have this still for me. Filippo is shopping. Mm -hmm. And you stop by at Celine. I have a super quick question for you and I'll leave you because I'm in Brighton. Do you know what this is? Yep. What is it? It's the chocolate of our first date. Yeah! I found it. Keep it, baby. Go I love ahead, it baby. so much, baby. <laughs> right? So Philip was at Celine shopping without me. And uh, clearly, because when he answered, I saw him and our Celine um, essay coming. She's the best. And what is it? Yes, you're the best too. Yes, I'm going to give you so many cuddles now. So <laughs> it's so funny because he was at Celine. And I was like, do you remember what this is, guys? Guys, 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 look at this. This is so nostalgic for me. I honestly, I'll keep this for Forever, like Filippo said so many things so many things and yeah I don't even know what to say I'm gonna go downstairs now to spend some more time with my mom because she's leaving today she's going back home so I'll finish this vlog later on because I'm, I still think I want to talk to you guys about the whole robbery update in terms of like completing the whole story and giving everybody a closure I thought I was filming when I was showing you the lip balm so basically I just came, I was watching Cats and Dogs on Netflix with my nephews, the dog, my sister, like super cozy, cute time. Filippo called me and I said, I'm eating my favorite cozy dish, drinking like a hot drink. I'm under a cashmere blanket, cuddling the dog. Kids are there, we're watching Netflix. It's literally what an autumnal weekend should look like, I think at least. I also wanted to say how much I'm loving these Laneige lip sleeping masks. They come in so many different scents. I think in my life, I bought more than 20 of these for sure. And like, I mean, that's a lot for like a lip balmy product. And this one is apple lime, light green. But one that I have in Milan is caramel apple. It's so good. Very cozy, very autumnal. I'll link it below. You guys know I love to show you some of my favorites. I bought this like with my money and work with this brand. I have some products that I find are very, very appealing to me when it comes to this time of the year. And specifically, for example, obviously I need to get my nails done. I have my appointment. I just need to go back to Milan. But there are like things like I just sprayed <laughs> at home the Dior Spice something fragrance. I will link it below as well for you to see. I'm now gonna moisturize my cuticles because you know, that's the kind of stuff that I like to do when the cozy season comes. I think we just sent as well like a very autumnal newsletter where I share with you some of my favorite things. Like I, I've said it before, we never actually do sponsored newsletter. Newsletter is always, always, always organic. It always includes my actual favorite things that I like to share with you guys. So it's basically full of things that I find online. Sorry if I'm looking down, it's just because of cuticle oil. It always just includes like things that I found that I like before I show them to anybody else. So if you haven't signed to my newsletter, I know I keep saying that, you should do that now because I'm very much dedicated to the blog. I spent today like two hours, even if it's Saturdays, working on the blog, like writing text, scheduling posts, etc. And I think like we dedicate a lot of time to it as a team. It's not like a huge audience that reads blogs, but the audience that does read blogs is very, very dedicated to it because there's like at least three or four blog posts a week. We're trying to find a way for you guys to automatically receive a notification when a new blog post comes out. I just don't know how to do it. I need to figure out. I think that could be something really cool. But yeah, I don't know if you've seen my blog. We have like always new blog posts, like I said. There's the newsletter. There's also like a shop my Instagram section, which basically shows all the Instagram posts that you can shop, even
even like because I would like link the right items on there there's like the shop section which includes like items that are like under 100 more luxury items the beauty favorites the gifting the home section we try to really like make it as diverse as possible I also have like a bag section on there which talks well I talk about my favorite bags and I review different bags I kind of put a spotlight on the bags that I think are really trending and are exciting at that moment this smells really nice as well very like moisturizing and I don't know like just love anything like moisturizing and cozy and cashmere for the season like this it's like a really staple classic piece cashmere knit yeah but anyway i'm kind of trying to go and tell you about everything that i want to tell you but i'm actually <sighs> preparing myself i've been putting away filming this video for so long and i don't really know why if i'm very honest so i think i'll just start from the beginning and i'll open up and i'll talk if i'm jumping from topic to topic or it's not very concise or if it's not very clear feel free to ask me in the comments below whatever you want to know i have never prepped prepared or thought about filming this video or how i would do it so i'm just going to talk from the heart and tell you how everything is and i don't know why i'm a little bit scared to talk about this topic <sighs> I think I know why I'll tell you what I think so for those of you who are new in 2021 in July my apartment in Paris where I lived at the time got robbed and I've spoken about it a lot as you kind of have to on the channel because many of the things that I had got stolen and when I say many I mean many 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 I was very like in favor of luck that I actually had a lot of my things in England still so it's not like my whole life got stolen which could have happened but they have stolen based basically what I had in Paris, my entire handbag, jewelry, watch collection, a lot of the like essentials, necessities, and I believe there were like 50 handbags, bizarrely. They left like three or four Bottega Veneta bags. They left a one Chanel bag that was broken. They left the white cocoa handle bag. I think it looked like quite dirty, but it's the vibe. And I think they were fearing they're not gonna be able to fix it or they just couldn't fit or they prioritized in a weird way. I don't know but basically what they've done is they opened my remote luggages they packed everything in there and they left the building as tourists so it didn't look really that suspicious considering that in july in paris at that time of the day when the robbery actually took place it's still daylight now the reason why i haven't spoken about this even though we had like you know some insights and stuff like of, from police etc is because the police said listen if you want us to catch the people who robbed you you cannot speak about it because any kind of inside info that we have and we find out will be delaying the justice and will be like if they know what we know they will like manage to run away so like if they know that we have some information from watching your channel etc it will actually be very bad for the investigation so i had to keep my mouth shut i actually didn't even announce about the robbery for like a few days after the robbery but since it was like a huge amount that got stolen it was on the news and the news found out from the police because whatever happens in the city police has to give to like a pr like for the city something like that like that's what they explained to me like the press some kind of press conference and then they decide whether or not they want to talk about it so i guess because this was like the first time that like an influential person got robbed they told me that it was like a first kind of celebrity robbery after kim kardashian and like the biggest one of the apartment ever since so it was like very serious and i have to say that the police at the time I'm not gonna say they were very friendly at all in paris in fact there was a lot of judgmental stuff said to me i have to say that i was the first influencer that got robbed at the time so it was very shocking to me since 2021 i know more than 10 influencers that i know personally that got robbed but i think like more than 50 people who do similar jobs to me actually got robbed now one thing that i would like to say is that i really didn't appreciate from police is when they told me like well <laughs> you got robbed because you post what you have on social media now if i wouldn't post what i have on social media i wouldn't even have that because everything that i have i earned thanks to social media so again it brings me back to the previous topic that we just spoke about like this is my job and posting is my job so not posting the stuff and product and very often i'm posting stuff that are actually not even mine so like when i say that i mean like samples so during fashion week you see me wear like you know that hermes look that i wore i think it's very valuable it doesn't belong 
belong to me. The jewelry I wore to Chomet, I always say it, it doesn't belong to me, it is sample, I had to return it. Like the day after, jewels got back. That month when I got robbed, after I went to Amphar, I wore a ring that cost 950,000 euros, so 1 million euro ring. I returned it the same night, I had a security guard with me, he wasn't with next to me, but he was always like observing me. That's something that like jewelry brands always give to you when um, you wear like really, really valuable jewelry that belongs to them, etc. So it is part of my job and I didn't like the police was like, don't show it because I was like, okay, like let me do my job, but you do your job. You know what I mean? Which I wouldn't really say they were great at because I was really trying to help and it took a while. The reason why I'm filming this video today is because recently we found out that the justice was served so that people who robbed my apartment are in jail now. And for, if I remember well, nine years, in fact, because that was not the only robbery. <laughs> but justice was served. I really do believe in justice. Like I told you many, many times before, I do think that life is fair. And I think, you know, I will never get back that feeling of safety that I had in that home, in Paris in general. Sure. But maybe that's for the better. I think in all honesty, when I watched the video that I filmed about this particular situation, I filmed the video like a week after the robbery. And when I watch it back, I really am like a little bit proud of myself because I was very strong. I, I was not really ever crying for the material stuff. I was never upset about it. Filippo said he was shocked how I reacted, but I was really traumatized from the shock, from the shock of coming home and seeing your home in such condition. And it took us like five minutes to understand we were robbed because the way that our apartment was, it was like you enter and there was like one very long side of the apartment. And then at the end of it, you go into the other long side and the wardrobe was here. But from the entrance, you couldn't go into the wardrobe. So you had to go like, like this until we understood like because like living room was intact dining room was intact and then the bedroom was a bit messy but I couldn't really remember if I left it like that or not you know what I mean and Filippo said he knew immediately that it was a robbery because he knew exactly that he didn't leave his stuff like that but you know I also thought like uh maybe I accidentally left a window open because we never did but you know maybe you think like maybe it was the wind or something like that whatever so <sighs> I was very traumatized from the shock itself because I felt so safe in that place and all of a sudden it was a reality check. And because of the shock for weeks to come, I actually had a bit of like speech issue. Like I would be talking, but the words that I'm intending to say would come wrong or like different words. I want to say like, I don't know, a lip balm, but I say shampoo, you know, like it was very strange and apparently it's a normal reaction. So that was the kind of like aftermath of it that it affected on me. I don't think I was particularly sad, but I was constantly looking over my shoulder. And one other thing that happened to me, I've never told anybody on YouTube this story. This is like, guys, it's crazy. So I think like two or three weeks after, this was the period of time, if you followed me, you know. At this period, Philip already was consulting in Italy for a company. Sorry, these days I'm talking a lot and I'm, I don't have enough memory space. He didn't have a place. We were staying in a hotel. Even after I got robbed and I moved to Milan, we were staying in a hotel for a while. It took us a long time to find a place. And I actually right after. So in the robbery, just to give you a little back information, they stole my passports, they stole my house keys, they stole numerous watches, they stole like, I can't remember now, like 13 Hermes bags or something like that. I know like more than 10 Chanel bags, several Dior and all the others like Vuitton. Like they literally took even my dirty, filthy makeup bags. I mean, that was like shocking for me. They stole like Rolex, Patek, Bulgari watch. Like I can't even name like Cartier bracelets. I can't even name all the things that they stole. It's like crazy. And basically, I flew to Belgrade, I got a new passport, etc. Eventually, I came to Milan. I checked in the hotel where I was constantly in and out and they said like, hi Tamara, checking you in. You know, they didn't ask to see my ID because I've stayed at that hotel like millions of times before. They were like checking you in, don't worry, like Philippe was already in the room because like he already had the room. So I just had to like sign up that I'm coming to join him. Uh, I didn't need to leave like my credit card or passport, etc. So that night it was like, I think it was Milan Fashion Week in like two or three days or that night, I can't remember now, but it's 3 a.m. someone's knocking at the door and knocking at the door. And I thought to Filippo like, oh my God, someone's knocking at the door. It's probably like a drunk person. Can you go and check it out? And he opens the door and he's like talking and then he closes the door and he looks at me and he's like, Tamara, it's police. And I was like, oh my God, we're in Milan, keep in mind. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like, they're asking to speak to you. And I was like, what? And in this moment, I'm like, okay, let me get dressed because like I'm sleeping. I'm like, and not in like appropriately dressed to face uh, police. So I look at Filippo and I said, do you think something happened to my family? Because just to also give you a little bit more of a background information, I have never in my life ever encountered 
mounted police unless something was like stolen from me because never have I had any issues touch wood with law so at this point I'm thinking something bad happened to my family so anyway I open the door and they tell me like hi what's your name and I'm like Tamara and they said can you prove that it's you and I said yeah sure I have a passport <laughs> you know and they're like okay because someone's checked in yesterday or whatever at this hotel with your old stolen passport so I'm like that's not possible because I'm here and why would anybody be checking in with my stolen passport so then I realized that actually they are monitoring this passport the dog wants to come in yeah. and because when I checked in the receptionist just used like the same details that I had already put like that they had on file which were of a stolen passport and for that reason they told that somebody checked in with the stolen passport and came to arrest the person at 3 a.m. can you imagine that this was also quite traumatic for me to be honest but I think the worst part was worse than the robbery itself was week after the robbery getting numerous messages of people like hey I think I found this belongs to you I think I found that belongs to you I'm so grateful to my community because they helped me so much they helped me get certain closures and they helped the investigation significantly and I'm gonna tell you now how which I think is a, like a quite interesting story like after I got robbed we accumulated obviously this document of everything that got stolen and keep in mind that everything that I ever bought I bought from the boutique and shop so I had like receipts, I had the papers for like watches, for everything and anything and I also um, had receipts and serial numbers of everything so useful. So weeks after my sister was monitoring all the like reselling websites to see if she can find any of the things that belong to mine. Now this story I don't think I can even tell you the full story because it's so big that it will take like hours of a video but I'll try my best to be concise. So one day a very dear follower, I'm not gonna say her name just to protect her but I think she will know who she is as her initials are HH because like lots of followers were messaging me to say like hey is this yours is this yours and very often it'd be like a similar like for example like a green Kelly or like a Cray a Birkin but like not the same hardware or not the same leather and you know like honestly when you think about Hermes it's like so many things have to actually come together is it Cellier is it Return is it Epson leather? Is it Chevre? Is it the right shade? Is it the right hardware? It would say like year 2020 and I know that I got the bag in 2019 so I knew that it wouldn't be the bag. So what happened is that on one occasion I'm sitting in the dinner, I'm in Ibiza on holidays and I receive from my follower a message, hey look at this profile, these bags look like they belong to you because on the same profile which is like lots of reselling bags on Instagram, there were like three bags that could belong to me. There's a Birkin 25 in grey, a 10. There was a Birkin 25 in rose purple, correct hardware and color combos and the sizes. And then there was a pink Chanel bag and there was a turquoise Chanel bag. The turquoise Chanel bag I literally just unboxed in a video that I showed you. It got stolen. I literally still like had the receipt hot from the printer, okay? Never worn it. And I look at it and I'm like, the coincidence of the combination, it's not like just one bag. It was like four bags. The coincidence was two big so i contacted the person and i said like hey can you share the serial numbers of the bags with me and she said no i can't unfortunately that's not how we work i actually tried to find the person on instagram and i couldn't find her anymore because this lady in the end helped me in a way and i will try to include as much information that i can so you guys can know so she said no i can't unfortunately we cannot share these things but if you share with me your serial number i will tell you if it's that or not and this person it says that she was a doctor by the way in her profile that this was her side hustle uh, which I thought like okay this is really promising because doctors pharmacists dentists certain profession they don't want to have any issue or a criminal record because obviously this could mean that you cannot practice your profession anymore so she says can you share your serial number so I share the serial numbers of the Birkins okay and she's like oh my god this is your bag and comes a picture of the serial number and of the bag I have screenshots that's why I I was like searching for the Instagram page recently but I have the screenshots of this conversation because I was constantly sending like to my sister to my friends etc and I think she changed the username or something like that because I still have the screenshots of this so I promise you guys I was with my friends at the dinner in Ibiza it was like a big dinner of 10 people I felt the worst when I found out that this was my bag than the time that I got robbed because for me it was like someone stabbed me in my belly okay so that night I found also she was based in in US I was like how did my bags make 
like it there so anyway on this occasion i asked her if i'm um, what shall we do like you know can we work on this together and stuff and she's like so sorry i don't want to be involved also i sold these bags already so there's nothing i can do goodbye me i don't know anything about the u.s law i don't know anything about any law i'm like okay she doesn't want to get involved she doesn't want to help and she said i already sold the bags i cannot do anything they're not with me they're not in my possession so that's it goodbye have a great day and i'm like okay but can you help me can you maybe tell me like who you bought these bags from and she did and she did share some information with me that was it that was that's where the story ends so i felt very 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 anxious that's the right feeling to describe i felt extremely anxious and i don't know why because it's just like feeling that my stuff was somewhere there having their own life with somebody else and wanting to understand what happened having like a piece of puzzle that is like a future step but you don't have all the steps in between was really difficult for me so Filippo told me that we need to let it go and we kind of let it go one week later I'm going to Montenegro and I land in Montenegro and I don't know if it was the same person HH or somebody else who sent me a picture of turquoise Chanel the same one that was on this doctor's page but on a new page and this page looks like super legit very nice actually I'm gonna tell you which page this was because this lady was extremely extremely kind nice and helpful to me and helping me get my stuff i'll have to check with her if it's okay to mention her because she was like really 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 helpful and it was georgia from read Deluxe. so i basically asked her like hey you know i recently got robbed and this bag got stolen from me the turquoise chanel as well as nothing that was it it was just like that the bag only just came out okay it was like very fresh and i said you know do you mind checking the serial number because i'm worried like i'm thinking perhaps it could be mine and she said of course i can check if you share with me like the receipt i can absolutely check with you i just want to let you know that i've had so many of these bags recently that I, it's not too much of a coincidence it, it's common so I said okay no problem she had two in stock actually because this bag was very popular so on this occasion I shared the receipt with her and she said Tamara I'm shocked this is your bag I bought it from another person like another reseller that I trust and I am shocked, but I'm gonna send it to you back immediately. So I'm super grateful to her because she actually was a very important link in first of all, getting the justice and second of all, getting more of my stuff back. Because two days later or one day later, I'm on my holidays in Montenegro, I'm trying to relax and switch off. And I receive a message from the doctor, not a very nice one. And she's telling me like, listen, stop telling people that I sold them like um, stolen goods. That is not correct. And the people are coming back to me, you know, complaining. That so clearly she had about me getting back the turquoise bag back and was due to like refund this person so that the the like eventually all these people should get refunded from the robber right but it's so crazy to me because i think the robber literally sold the bags for nothing for like basically so little money and then eventually because it was going from a seller to a seller to a seller the price kept keeps increasing but whatever so i am in a huge debt to georgia because she was very fair so i get back to her saying like listen i mean i'm not telling people you're selling stolen stuff i just keep finding my stuff on the internet so when i ask people where they got it from if they get it from you of course they will come to you eventually you know what i mean anyway she was like i don't know what to do like this is a huge problem i paid a lot of money for these bags and she didn't want to share with me how much money or receipts or anything like that so we'll never know but eventually after she consulted like a solicitor or a lawyer and after i went to the police as well she realized that she has to actually give back the bags so she told me that she's contacted the clients that she gave the two Birkins to, which were the Birkin 25 in Grietan and the Birkin 25 in Rosepurp. She said she will send them back to me. I was shocked. Like, I wasn't shocked because I'm getting the bags back. I was just shocked because it took a lot of stress to get, like, this stuff back. With the Turquoise Chanel, this was already, like, it arrived. I was staying at the Plaza Tene in Paris and it was sent to me, like, next day delivery. The bag arrived no, straight from Montenegro. I went to Paris. On that day, we had to close down the apartment we cleaned everything you know we've done everything and we took all of our boxes from the apartments and we were in paris right after montenegro and the bag was already waiting for me there the turquoise chanel bag now i was still fighting with the doctor not fighting because she was not like fighting me but i was just saying like can't you just like help me and give me all the information but i also understand that someone didn't want to reveal information of like all the information of who she bought it from she said like oh like you know i don't want to divulge i understand she was also probably 
probably scared but it just I find it so fascinating and also stressful because if I was the one involved in something and I could help deliver the justice I would want to give all the information you know what I mean anyway so we went back and forth back and forth back and forth eventually she spoke to like a policeman in her region and they told her that she had to actually give back the stolen goods and then she could file the report against the person who sold her the goods I suppose which also I don't want her to be out of pocket which is why I wanted her to tell me who she bought the stuff from and how much she paid for them because that could be very useful for the investigation but she didn't want to tell us how much she paid the goods for I guess because it was for very little money and she was worried I guess allegedly whatever you say I suppose she was worried and I understand so anyway I feel like a few days later she tells me she will send me the two Birkins back but at this point I don't want them sent to my house because I don't want to give her my address because I'm like paranoid as f and I asked for those to be shipped in Paris again I believe to Plaza I can't remember if it was to Plaza or to my photographer at the time who was coming next day to Belgrade and who brought me the bags I'll try and see if I can find the picture of when the two bags made it to me I felt I was shaking I didn't want to show it because you know I'm like a proud woman but I was so so affected because I wanted to grab these bags they looked like so cold they were not cold but they looked so cold and like you know they were all dismantled like the clochette was taken off like put in a little bag da -da -da, everything they didn't look like they, they looked like my bags but they didn't look like my bags so I was so 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 shaken that I wanted to grab these bags and ask them where have you been what was your journey I was thinking about the fact that these people like pack them and then they unpack them in somebody's home probably or somewhere and then they put them in like boxes to send them with the DHL across the ocean and those were like my bags that I was carrying around and like second day to sleep you know what I mean like things like that that I was really a affected by wondering where have they been that I could never wear them again but I said to myself one day I will tell the story on YouTube and then I will be able to tell the story because they will be caught but I couldn't tell this story because if I told the story the potential thief will know that we know who they were sent from to whom that we found the piece etc 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 and then they could hide and obstruct the actual investigation so to tell you the truth I actually contacted the police and I said hey like you know I have all of this information like where the bags came from at what time they were sent from Paris in which DHL all of this info and the police told me stop playing like detective this is not your job that's our job and we have to follow procedures that's always what I was getting we need to follow procedures we need to follow procedures so I gave up getting involved with the police and they did follow the procedures and like they told me they have served the justice this is not where the story ends if you think this is where the story ends I then let it go this was like month August right because I just came back end of August in month November <laughs> police reached out to me and was like hey Tamara we think you were onto something and we think that you need to share with us those uh, informations that you had because now we can maybe use them so eventually I shared with them they really tried they broke into the apartment of the person that was allegedly the person that stole the stuff or was involved in the robbery in some way and basically what happened is that they found lots of bags they showed me like a video it was like a sea of bags and I could see a lot of bags were also counterfeit like you know but none obviously of my bag obviously 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 it's very clear you know what I mean what happened I forgot to tell you one more thing while on the same trip in Montenegro I think like first night dinner I find an Instagram page in Morocco with eight of my bags I'll insert the screenshot guys eight of my bags and this is where I got in a bit of situation it was like I remember clearly like Prada Clio I remember like Ford's bag a Jimmy Choo sparkly bag that was a sample that I was shooting for a project a Dior bag a Bottega Veneta lime green pouch that I just got and I loved and I wore it all the time Bulgari Oasis in two colors both because I got two colors I mean come on what are the chances very random no and Jimmy Choo sample gave it away because the bag wasn't out yet so I was like well so anyway I actually contacted a lawyer in Morocco that was recommended to me by a reputable person and I'm not gonna say names because honestly like I don't need to get in trouble for this I paid the lawyer the fee that 
she asked for and the lawyer disappeared. I mean, she didn't disappear. She told me like, oh yeah, 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 I'm doing work, I'm doing work. And then she disappeared and I never heard back from her again. So basically she stole the money from me. I don't know if in combination with the man that recommended her to me or not, I will never know. But I know that basically I got robbed here as well. So after that, I decided that I need to let it go. <laughs> in terms of like suing. So if, in case you're wondering why wouldn't I sue people now after all this time, I feel like for me it was an incredible lesson because now I live in a freaking prison in terms of like how secure it is. And also I never keep all my stuff in one place, which is why, for example, now I bring lots of my handbags in a bank trezor, in like safety deposit box. I keep stuff like in different parts. Like I bring them in England, then we bring them in like trezor. Then in Italy, I keep some in trezor, etc., etc., etc. But I would rarely ever have my bags and jewelry and watches and things in one place and never do anymore. It was an incredible lesson for me. It was a lesson of how I would deal in such situations because all I did when that happened was worked even harder. I didn't take any time off after the robbery. I literally went to Cannes Film Festival 10 days after or less than 10 days after and I gave my absolute best. I think I did like four red carpets. I like killed it, I think. And I absolutely understood how gritty I am and that I'm so resilient to things that happen to me and they do not affect my work. So that was like a very, very, very important lesson because all of these things were happening and I was struggling. But did you guys know about it? No, I think like very often, obviously this is not the worst, they're like much worse things happened to me. Like even throughout my career, like I had, I don't know, like this year, my father had two really big surgeries related to his health. It's not like it ever affected like an upload on YouTube. It's not something I spoke about because, not because I didn't want to speak about it, but because I was scared to talk about it before he goes into the surgeries etc throughout my career I had like lots of family ups and downs some of the things that I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to talk about that are related to health uh, because they were kind of traumatic to my whole family you know like things happen and what I wanted to say is that despite the fact that I try to always show the highlights of my life like it's like a highlight reel I still try to tell you when I'm ready about certain things and when I can talk about certain things so yeah, I was saying that sometimes, you know, like you see things on YouTube and I try to like, I want to be honest with you guys and I want to tell you things and I don't always feel very comfortable about talking about negative things. I was like that also when I was a child, when I went to school, I didn't want to, even as a child, if something bad would happen to me, like I would hurt myself, I didn't want to tell my parents because, not because I, I was scared of them, but because I felt like I don't want to put like negative things onto them and bad things onto them, especially as you guys know that my parents, including my sister and me and our family, we were refugees. There was so much negativity already. So many bad things were happening that I didn't want to like add about, like I hurt myself in school. I remember like one day my sister was nine. I think she, no, 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 wait, we were still in Sarajevo. So my sister was, she must have been like seven and she got like hit by a car outside of school. Like not badly, but she was like all scratched on her legs and stuff. And she didn't want to tell the parents because she, A, she was scared a little bit, I think. And I think B, there was so much going on that it just felt like worrying people People that already have a lot on their plate is like unnecessary. I go to social media, I don't know about you guys, but I go to social media for some carefree information. Like right now I'm really obsessed with TikTok. You know, the pesto stories when there's like Susie, uh, the TikToker, who says like, I don't know about you guys, but no, what does she say? She says something like, call me crazy, but I never like the store bought pesto. And then people stitch it. I literally want to stitch it because I feel like I have so many freaking crazy stories that I feel I cannot tell. If you knew me in real life, what I tell all the people around me in my real life is my YouTube community is my family. And it was my YouTube viewer who helped me. And now, like, for example, you can kind of better understand as well so many things about me. And there's so many crazy stories that I have. I thought this was my dog. But this is the Ikea dog and my dog is sleeping with this dog. So many things that I could tell you that would make me seem so much more logical because I don't make sense even to myself. But when you understand the crazy situations that I've been through in my life, you would understand. I mean, there are many, many stories that I would love to tell and... Yeah, I think now as well, maybe you can understand better why I'm not a huge fan of shopping at pre-loved when it comes to Hermes. However, when it comes to Georgia and Redelux, I really, really 
trust her so much because she's so transparent she's so like you know on it on top of the game so honest she helped me so much and after that i bought my louis vuitton agenda from her i shop from her i love her because i believe like that's the kind of person that i feel is like trustworthy this is not ad this is not sponsored I, everything i bought from her i bought for, like full price however i wanted to say that i have contacted some resellers there was one particular one that i can't unfortunately say who it was because i'm worried that i will get a lawsuit but there was one reseller that i asked hi could you please kindly help me here's a police report this happened to me and i'm trying to get to the bottom of things and this person sent me a nasty message saying like this is not my problem mind your own mm, business and blocked me on instagram i was like wow and you know what i couldn't do anything about it i really couldn't do anything about it so many people didn't respond didn't want to help the person that i actually after the like morocco lawyer didn't help after i contacted the person with the shop directly she wasn't bothered you know what i mean it happened so many times that i tried to get my pajamas is my favorite so many times it happened that i tried to contact people and people were just like goodbye not our problem which is why i'm so grateful to her and which is also why when i am shopping at like pre-loved or like certain vintage pieces that i really want i'm very very careful very picky very selective because i want to shop from very they were even like very very famous online retailer <sighs> one that is um base like i don't know i'm trying to say something but like so that it's not like too clear but also not too like not clear like someone that is like based in la for example they were not helpful at all when i found like a very rare purple suede constance bag that i have and when i asked them if they can help with reference number they were like mm, no so yeah long story short that's basically it i also wanted to film this video because i think when justice is served people need to know about it and because it gives like that kind of little layer of hope that like justice does exist and that in the sea of bad things that happen today in the world not just today but in the world in general there are always bad things happening my mom says something pravda es pora, ali dostižna, and it means like justice is slow but achievable and she always tells me just lay back and sit and wait for the karma and that's exactly what i intend on doing so i don't need to do anything i can just sit and wait because in the end all the people who wronged me honestly guys i promise you this one all the people who wronged me in my life at some point or another they all got served okay so i hope this message helps you i hope this is clear if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i'll try and respond to you guys and i also have so many questions that i i, I don't know if this was all over the place i feel like i was just like so breathless and so anxious to tell this story many people from my real life they know this story already so for them it's nothing new uh, my friends know this story a lot of like influencers they know this story because some of them like they were living it with me and also later on when um, same things were happening to fellow influencers i was trying to help them through the channels that i and through my experience that i've had so yeah i guess i just had to be the first influencer that gets robbed in that way it was the most shocking and unexpected experience but we came i think to the other side of tunnel because now i managed to get more things and more beautiful things than i've ever had and that's something that is also a lesson to all of us that things always happen for a reason thank you so much for watching this video i hope it wasn't too long and i hope i wasn't talking too much but i hope you can understand me and and yeah, I'll speak to you guys very soon. Bye, guys.